going to go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon. I would like to thank you all for joining the first principal webinar to discuss strong back to school practices. <clears throat> our, agenda to, our agenda today will include the purpose, introduction of our panelists, the panel discussion itself, questions and contact information. Welcome to the first monthly webinar series. This month, we will highlight our 2022 State Principal of the Year and division level honorees. These celebrated principals will take part in discussing strong back to school practices. We will start with introductions and ask each panelist to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about your journey to this high level of success. We will begin with Mr. Marco French, our 2022 State Principal of the Year. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's doing wonderful on this great Tuesday. Uh, my name is Marco French. I'm the State Principal of the Year um, for 2022. I, uh, my school is located in Shreveport, Louisiana, Kettle Parish Schools. I have been a principal for, this is my fifth year, starting my fifth year. They live by my school, um, Queensboro. We're part of the transformation zone here in Caddo. Um, school was recently a failing school for 20 years. Um, again, that's when I was graduating from high school. Um, up until I became the actual principal here at this school, we did turn the school around with some great, awesome help from other state um, representatives, Shabon Price being one of them. We were able to turn the school around in two years. Um, as you all see there on the screen, we were recognized as Louisiana's outstanding school, um, number one top performing school for third grade ELA literacy, um, as well as eight point gain in progress uh, I mean, as for SBS scores and a 97.3% progress index score increase. Um, I'm just honored to be a part of this group, honored to be named the state principal of the year and working alongside some phenomenal principals that are here with me. Um, as the uh, division level winners. All right, thank you, Mr. French. Next, we'll have Mrs. Karen Robertson, our 2022 elementary principal of the year. Hi, um, and good afternoon, and, and thank you for coming today. Uh, yes, I am the principal at Wesleysville Elementary um, in Vernon Parish. Um, this is my 28th year in education. I have been in administration for the last uh, seven years, starting my eighth year. And yes, um, my school was kind of in a school in decline, but since I've been here the first year, uh, we were able to increase our student performance, uh, growth performance from an 88 to a 93. And um, we were recognized for top gain status. Um, last two years, we haven't had um, scores. You know, we were out for the pandemic. And then last year, we all took a dip with um, from the pandemic. So we are working hard to, um, close those learning gaps uh, with our students. We are working on involving our students in the data and letting them know where they are and where they need to be um, because we wanna continue to be a top gain school and keep growing students. I've always said, I'd rather be green and growing than ripe and rotting. <laughs> and the kids know that too. So uh, yes, I'm blessed to be on this uh, panel of um, amazing principals. Yesterday we had an opportunity to share uh, with each other and share ideas with each other. So uh, we're glad to be here and share with you as well. Thank you, Mrs. Robertson. Next, we'll have Dr. Jeremy Muse, our middle school principal of the year. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Jeremy Muse. I am the principal at Lake Elementary. That's in Ascension Parish. Uh, we are a pre-K through eight school serving about a thousand students. Um, and so I've been in education for, I think this is year 23, uh, and principal here at Lake for five years now. We've really done a lot of great things as a team uh, in, in bringing great people around our students that have done fantastic things. We really have had a different road than the other two have talked about. We've always been a high performing school. And so the struggle for us has been to really expand on that and, and get our kids to do better than they've done before. And uh, that's, that's been difficult for us, but we're, we're doing a good job. We have been recognized as a top gain school when, during years that that was offered. 
Uh, and then most recently, uh, Lake Elementary was named as a model PLC by All Things PLC. So we're very proud of that. Uh, and the work that we do, really working with teachers to think about what makes sense for kids um, and, and balancing what we know about them and then what we then have time to take action on because we've got to be able to do both of those to move students. And I just want to say I'm so happy to be here with these other three. They are just fantastic educators. Uh, we, we, might have, we might have cut up a little bit yesterday. We'll try to be better behaved today, uh, but it's really a fantastic group. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Dr. Muse. Next, we will have Mr. Ronnie Harvey Jr., our high school principal of the year. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, um, I'd like to thank you for having us. Um, again, I appreciate um, the opportunity and kind of being redundant what everybody else just said, but uh, the guests on the panel today, man, please understand that we're a family. Um, and I say we're a family, you know, um, Marco, Karen, Jeremy, and myself, I, we're really enjoying this time. So just to be able to have another opportunity to just be together is a phenomenal opportunity. I mean, that's what we have to realize as administrators is that and this is truly a family. Um, well, my name is Ronnie Harvey. I'm a principal at Washington Marion Magnet High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana, in Bishop of Capital Parish. Um, this is my 17th year um, as an educator. I've been a principal for five and a half years. Um, what we have been able to do as a team, um, not myself, I've just been able to be appointed the leader uh, such an amazing group of people, but we've been able to take the school from what we were labeled as a persistently struggling school um, to a school that now has a B rating SPS. And I think that comes from just genuinely having a care um, or caring about people. Um, we consistently talk about trying to change uh, our school climate and culture, empowering our community at the same time, because what we realize is that we have to go beyond the school community and go into the neighborhoods that are actually, actually coming from. So we've been trying to be uh, significant fig figures inside of the actual community. I think that is having a, a great impact on our school and our school culture. Um, we've also strategically tried to make sure that we not only recruit, uh, but we try to retain highly qualified and certified teachers. Um, obviously, we're all dealing with um, not just the pandemic, but we're, we're dealing with a shortage of teachers. Um, and so, so people and all, all, all the personnel factors of the education field. So we're trying to do a great job just recruiting and retaining those. And you know that's going hand in hand, one of the five clinical points of the DOE. But also just trying to make sure that all students are college and career ready. You know, we've come to the realization that every student is not going to be prepared for um, for your college at the end of their high school career. So we're trying to make sure that they will just be ready to go into and be more of um, assets and not abilities. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harvey. Okay, before we get started, I want to review the panel discussion topics. We will discuss strong back to school practices as it relates to participants supporting teachers, students, communities, professional development, and a couple of fun questions. So let's get started. Mr. French, what programs do you have in place for new teacher support? You have to unmute yourself, let me see. It's not doing, hold on just a second. See if you can do it. Okay, yeah. can you, okay. Yeah. okay. All right, so the programs that I have in place for new teacher support right now, um, we have what we call a new teacher academy. And it's nothing that's out of the box. I'm sure a lot of schools, a lot of principals do it. Um, but we have a new teacher academy that is geared towards teachers with zero to three years of experience. Um, inside of that, it's more of a time for them to come with their personal needs as far as education and teaching, um, as well as what we see from in-hand data that we have. That can take place from EE pads, because we are a TAP school, um, walkthroughs that we do, but any observations that we see throughout the day um, that teachers are actually doing instructionally, um, classroom management-wise, any of those things, we kind of go through with them there. We also have an outline curriculum that we've done here at the school 
that we follow each three weeks. There's a different topic that we actually study and make sure that teachers become masters in that particular craft. But again, if there's any need that the teacher says they need help with, whether it's lesson planning, planning or whatever, during this new teacher academy, we're able to make sure that we are supporting those teachers on that playing field where they need it. And overall, just strengthen the development of teachers in our building. Okay. Mrs. Robertson, how do you motivate teachers after the excitement of the first two weeks has settled? So that's when teachers need to see you. They need to see you outside of the classroom or outside of the office and in their classroom. That's when they need to hear um, some encouraging words. They need you to listen um, to them. Sometimes it's a technology issue that you weren't aware of or um, they need or um, a behavior issue that they are managing, but that's when they need to see you. They need to see you out and about walking around um, with them. Um, I like to leave encouraging notes. I like to also have occasional treats at our sign in um, or at a PLC. You know, we like to call them eating meetings. Um, and those small treats go a long way and they don't have to cost anything, um, just positive notes. Um, I like to leave notes on their cars um, to let them know that I have noticed their hard work, but being there, checking in on their families, checking in on them uh, socially, emotionally, checking in to see um, how our lesson planning's going, um, checking in on their grades, but being there, um, getting out of your office and um, being in the halls is when, that's what I have found is, has motivated them to keep going after the excitement and when they start in the um, trudges of uh, um, SLTs and benchmark assessments and all the data that comes in from um, assessing at the beginning of the school year. So get out of your office and get in those hallways and listen to your teachers. Thank you. Dr. Muse, what advice do you have about initial classroom observations, especially on announcements? Let me see if I can. Ah, it worked. Thank you. <laughs> I'll not. I'll not do that again. Um, so, thank you for that question. You know, I, I think that um, as far as observations go, you know, we we need to be in the classrooms before uh, that observation actually comes around, like like Karen's talking about, and leaving positive feedback and leaving notes for teachers so they can see what it is that they're doing well. I think that phrase is consciously competent. We wanna make them aware of the things that are strengths for them. Um, and then also when it's time to do that observation, you know, we really should be in there before that and giving the teacher feedback to give them the opportunity to improve. And so when we get into a formal observation, um, there's really not a surprise of, of the feedback that you're giving the teacher and you've really been up and up on the on the front end with them. So they know, you know, some good feedback and some good advice that would help them be more successful on whatever rubric or student engagement that you're looking for. Okay. Mr. Harvey, how do you approach specific high quality academic feedback for teachers at the beginning of the year? Well, um, I think what we have to do at the beginning of the year is you, we have to be transparent and we have to set that um, Like I tell teachers all the time, you know, some things we just cannot afford to negotiate and gambling with a child's future is not enough for negotiation. So we have to set those expectations at the beginning of the year, let the teachers know what we actually expect. But we have to collaborate as well and let them be a part of vision and expectation. Um, sometimes we make a mistake as an administrator that we just let people know what our expectations is versus what, what we should all be expecting. And I think the biggest way to achieve that at the beginning of the year is to meet people where they are instead of expecting them where they're not. Sometimes we have some high expectations for individuals, and it's really not even achievable depending on, you know, where they're at in their education, whether they're a rookie teacher or they're a veteran teacher or they're an out-of-day teacher you know, um, that's near retirement and haven't really got the technology aspects down. But sometimes we have to meet people where they are and just help grow them from there. So what we do at the beginning of the year, we actually just have an honest assessment and a conversation, just saying, hey, this is what we need to be. How can we get there? And then plan that track alone so that we can get them to the where they need to be. All right. Thank you.
Mrs. Robertson and Dr. Mutes, what is your plan to make school memorable for kids? Karen, let, let's talk about that. You know, I think that um, school really can be fun. We have to remember that uh, it, it's really great to be here. It's so much fun to be with students every day. And so working with teachers to remind them of that and then planning things for the kids to do that are that are fun and engaging, not just academic, but we're talking clubs, assemblies, socially distanced, of course, whatever those requirements are that we have to do. But we really want to be aware of, of building in the fun for kids and making that, that be a part of school. We want them to enjoy being here and uh, even as working with middle school kids, you know, they, they want those incentives, they want those little fun things that are, that are different and break up the normal schedule. So they, they really are looking for any little surprise. We had a, we had a surprise spirit day today, you know, so kids could wear whatever school stuff they had, school colors, and it's just an unexpected thing that, that helps, helps people keep a little bit more motivated and interested in, in being here every day. What do you think, Karen? Oh, I think that's absolutely right. Um, I make an effort to be the first smiling face they see in the morning and the last one they see when they leave. And one thing that I say every day on the announcements is reading makes you smarter. And I call out birthdays and every child on their birthday, they can come to my office and get a book off my shelf. So I give them a birthday book and I have labels inside that says happy birthday. Reading makes you smarter. And I sign. And so and then we start that builds conversations with them about their birthday book that they've read. Um, so that, that's one thing I agree with, um, Jeremy that, you know, having activities, we have our um, PBIS celebrations every nine weeks and having, um, clubs, we have robotics club, but just being there and letting them see you and smiling at them every morning and telling hello and trying to, to, um, memorize all their names I, I tell them all the time I'm I have 530 students and there's just one of me but I am determined to try to remember the name and they figure that out and so they quiz me in the mornings on on their name so um building the relationships with them putting those smiles on their face but I love giving them a book a birthday book and they they look forward they'll say my birthday's tomorrow and I'll say well I'll be calling your name to come get a book um so yeah building relationships and and and, you know, just letting them know you're there, you care, and remembering their name. They want you to know their name. That, that cliche that what if the principal sneezes, the whole school catches a cold. So I think if we have fun and we enjoy being here, uh, that that's contagious. And I enjoy doing that. Yeah. All right. This question is for everyone on the panel. Describe an innovative practice for the start of school. So I'll start on this one. I've um, kind of got on the bandwagon with escape rooms and I, on our first PLC um, staff development day, we've had an escape room activity as a team builder um, that is all around positive um, school culture. Um, I also like to do a scavenger hunt through the handbook. Instead of just going through the handbook, we have a scavenger hunt. And then if any of you know anything about goose chase, it's a digital mm -hmm. kind of activity, a team building activity, and it's gotten to where um, the teachers are planning ahead because they're trying to figure out if I'm going to do a goose chase or a escape room um, because there's competition because we have prizes at the end and they want to be the ones to win. So those are some fun team building things that I do on PD days to kind of break the ice and also to get um, each other to know each other. But scavenger hunts, um, escape room, um, goose chase, those are all fun things to do to get the job done and have fun doing it. And I took the question um, from both sides of both for students and staff. So for my staff, one thing that I've been doing lately, uh, we do, everyone's probably saw the show, The Great American Race. So we actually do a, the Queensboro American Race um, here at the school where I put the teacher in teams and they have a cruise sheet to where they have to go. And this runs them from Shreveport to Bulge. If those know how close Shreveport to Bulge is, just right across the river. But there's different clues that get you to different um, areas in both Shreveport and Bossier. And the only way you can get the next clue is you have to snap a picture. So one of the um, clues on the sheet was we have nothing to lose but everything to gain. So they had to, the, the, 
the clue before they led them to Target. So when they were in Target, they had to find um, gain washing powder or detergent and take a picture with one of the sales clerks in Target. Um, so now you're on Target with gains. Um, so they took that picture, sent it to me, and I sent the next clue to them. And then at the end of all the clues, you ended up at the place where they actually have lunch with each other. So do we have time to waste half a day? Yes, we do. We don't, but we, have, we don't have time not to do it because one, I need my staff to work together as a team. And once they truly trust each other, know each other, that's going to make the academic side so much easier for me, for them jumping on board. When I say, hey, you all, this is the plan this year. We're going to jump off the river to teach our kids how to swim. They're going to jump off the bridge into the river with me to teach the kids how to swim because we, still, we have built those relationships. So that's one thing I do for the staff. As for as students, every year, and I was so afraid that I wasn't going to be able to do it this year, but we have music blasting um, in front of the school. There's a big balloon arch, big welcome signs, and a lot of my kids walk to school, so they're able to hear the music a block away. So as they're coming to school, the entire staff is outside welcoming them to school, and then we're dancing and everything as they come in the building, both parents and students. And that goes back to what Karen and um, Jeremy just talked about, those memories for kids at school. Well, that's a memory a child's gonna have forever. Um, and then once we're actually in the building, every Monday, uh, well, every day during the first week of school, we do this, but now it's every Monday of school. We have Monday morning motivations. And what that is, is staff get to share out any good things they saw in the classroom or the child. And the kids also get to share out something special about each other or their teachers. And again, you're still building those relationships, making this truly a safe space for kids to learn and building memories. And who doesn't like hearing something good about them the start the week off or the morning off because that gives that kid a boost of confidence and now I'm going to go and attack class all day long doing what I'm supposed to do because someone noticed the good that I was doing. So and that works both for students and teachers and we get every Monday morning. Hey, I was actually hoping, hoping that uh, Jeremy jump on after Marco because man, it's always <laughs> hard to follow up behind Marco, but... <laughs> I always tell people, <laughs> it's like a receipt from yesterday. I always tell people, I think we have to start with the staff, though, and at the beginning. And every year, what I think our team does a phenomenal job of is planning a back-to-school in-service. Um, it starts with the, the first day you come back on campus, the energy, the vibes, the excitement have to be there because you're only as strong as your leaders on campus. So, for instance, this year we came back and we had the Army-style boot camp in-service. And the reason we had to go back to the basics was because we haven't had a normal school year um, in two years. So, you know, we dealt with the pandemic like everybody else. In, in Calcasieu Parish, we've dealt with two devastating hurricanes. So we've had a lot of stop starting uh, points with school just due to the elements of nature. So we had to go back to the basics and back to the basics this year was just remembering our why. Why are we here? Like, you know, so we had to go back and it was more so like basic training, all the PowerPoints, all that. The whole atmosphere was based about boot camp, you know. So I think that really helped us jumpstart this school year and letting teachers know, okay, that's the mindset we have to come in. Like, just like when a soldier leaves to depart or deploy, anything like that, they go to boot camp first and they get there, they get mentally and physically ready for whatever obstacles they're about to endure. And that's the same thing we do for the school year. Last year we did. Uh, you know, the mission is possible, like the James Bond type movie. And we do that because we truly believe here at Washington, Maryland, we're going to be in a school. So we have to have that type of mentality. And I think that excitement, though, that energy level trans, it goes down into the kids and the kids understand, OK, if the staff is doing this. The staff is wearing camouflage. The staff is bonding to the concept. It gets everybody like in that upbeat type energy to start the school year off. Well, Ronnie, you're, you're hard to follow too. That's all, all, right. that's all great stuff. Um, and, you know, I'll just start with a question to the other three. And I talked about this yesterday. What is the only reason I went to the LAP conference? To see me? <laughs> yes, that is correct. But also the food. Breakfast and lunch the was there. So I was there. See, y'all didn't think I was going to say it. Y'all didn't say, surely he's not going to say that. Yes, I am. I went for the food. And so that's a big part of our coming back to school and celebrating together is thinking about what we're going to do to enjoy time together. That includes breakfast and lunch and snacks. And we really like to uh, make a big deal about the, there's a calendar. It's like national days of the month, you know, whatever. And so uh, like national cookie day just happened. 
and there's a national chip and salsa day. And so we plan okay. those out for the year and talk about how great that's going to be. And everybody will bring something that, that, um, you know, helps with that. Everybody contributes, uh, on a, on an academic note, we always start out with reviewing how our leadership team left our school last year. What is the goal that the teachers created that we're going to focus on this year and making sure everything we do aligns to that. Um, and then on the student side, we really do a good job of making sure that I hope of making sure students believe that their voices are heard. Uh, and we do formal structures with that that we advertise and we put on the school calendar. And that includes, I have, you know, everybody does uh, pizza with the principal, right? Once a month or some sort of thing where each, each class has recognized a kid that, that's doing a really awesome job. But also I like to meet with um, uh, elect our elected student council officers once a month and really get to see uh, what's going on, what their, what their feedback is for us and what we need to do to improve school for them because they really are why we're here. And yes, we do that over lunch. All right, thank you. Mr. French, how do you ensure that students are taking ownership of their work? So this probably sounds cliche as you all, but for students to truly take ownership in their work, they have to have data in hand, just like the teachers. Um, I'm a firm believer of, for instance, Louisiana, you probably use Zern. Well, when it's time for Zern, after we've gone through the lesson, let's pull up the Zern tracker. And I need the kids to actually see who's in pink, who's in green, who's in yellow. I need them to see how many minutes they've actually been on Zern, how many lessons they have um, um, completed in Zern. And not only that, where they are struggling in Zern. Um, I know a lot of people are big on allowing other students to see students' name to their work, but we built a culture in our classrooms where this is a family. And the only way that we're going to actually help support each other and move, we have to know what's going on with each other. So I may be good with integers and Victoria is not. And I see she's struggling, but I have, I've mastered all my lessons for this week. I'm going to help Victoria. So that's kind of the culture that we built in our classroom. But the kids have to know their data themselves. And even though it's just a paper clip, moving the paper clips or putting the star on the stamp that they have mastered. But that's one thing that we do to make sure that students um, are being accountable and taking ownership of their work. Um, and again, this is a picture of them. We want them to be as joyous about it or not. We go as far as even on the bulletin boards outside the classrooms, um, student work is posted there. On those bulletin boards, on those sheets or whatever it is, that they, the assessments or whatever activity they did, there's feedback from the teacher. And it's powerful when you have that child can walk by and look at the feedback that that teacher left or another child walks by and see the feedback the teacher left and they're able to start thinking about a different way of solving that problem or how they could have fixed it. And those who had it, it's a kind of enrichment for them saying, yeah, I got to always remember, make sure I start with a capital letter, end with punctuation or whatever it is. Um, but that feedback plays important, a vital role with those students taking ownership. So end of all, just making sure students know their own data, how to read it, what a 97% looks like. What does that mean? I got a 53. What does that mean besides something else? What does it mean I need to do? Where do I need to start? If they know those particular whys and what's and how to get to it, then that's going to help not only catapult the instruction between the academic success for them, but it's going to help catapult the teacher instruction as well, because now those kids are formulating some of those look fors and whys for themselves that sometimes they can push the teacher and push the teacher on to push them. Okay. Mr. Harvey, knowing that many students have experienced trauma and loss this year, how are you molding the adult team on your campus to support them and support one another? I think it's, I think it starts with us as the leaders. Um, I, I can say this year, I am very, um, I'm more sympathetic and compassionate about people. Um, sometimes we get caught up in the data and the assessments and, you know, the programming and this program and this initiative. We, think we, we get caught up in all of that, like we quote unquote, it's, it looks great on paper. All the things that we can put out to help transcend the school or grow a school. But sometimes I'm going to be honest, I've been more concerned about people well-being um, and letting people know that I'm human just like you. 
Um, the same things that you're going through, I'm going through too. You know, we all have something that we're dealing with. Um, just so happened in Southwest Louisiana, like I've said before, we've all dealt with devastation from the hurricane. We've all dealing with a global pandemic. So I think for people to be able to see like, hey, I'm, I'm going through some things just like you. I'm more worried about people. I'm more worried about their feelings, their lifestyle, what's going on with them. How, you know, what's going on at home? How's their health? Um, not saying I'm not worried about test scores and assessment and things like that. I'm, I'm concerned about those things too. But I think sometimes we have to go back and worry about the social emotional aspect of what people are actually dealing with. Um, like I say, test scores, that's going to be there. Uh, you know, assessing this and assessing that, that's going to be there. But if you don't worry about people, the genuine will being of people is, is, is going to make life kind of hard. It does. And I mean, that's the students too. You think about it. We have all this programming in place for students. But what about the faculty and staff too? You know, there if you you can't you can't teach a child if you're not in a great state of mind too. So you know, we, I've been really focusing on just caring about people a little bit more. You know, like how are you doing today? Instead of you know, when I go by your classroom, it's not always about a, a visit. Like, I'm, I'm not always coming to see an observation. Observation like more so, hey, I'm with you, not that I got you. You know, a lot of times when people perceive an administrator coming to a classroom, they're looking and say. Oh my God, here he goes again. He's about to tell me about a bell ring or a benchmark or a standard or this. Sometimes I'm just coming and say, hey, are you thirsty? Hey, do you need a break? Hey, do you need to go walk to your car? Hey, do you need to call and check on your parent or your spouse or your kid? You know, what about their kids in school? Do you need to set up a parent conference? Sometimes I need to take your class and go do that because that is when I think we're showing that we're caring about people. And that's 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 something that I think we have to really go back to the basics. Let's care about people and then everything else will come. Okay. The next question is for Mr. French and Mr. Harvey. More and more schools are becoming community centers. Where are, what are some great strategies principals can use to reach out to stakeholders as well as to the families of the students? Go ahead, Harvey. You want to go first? Want me to go first? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I'm going to be transparent today. Something I was totally against, and it's becoming one of my greatest tools in the principal toolbox, social media. Okay? It can be a double-edged sword, but I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Um, parents will block a school phone number because they're tired of you calling. Okay? They don't want to hear about Johnny Joe being bad today. They don't want to hear about, oh, he did this or he did that. They want to hear positivity. So what I did was I... I, along with my team, not me, because believe me, I'm not the creative person on the team, but we've established a social media presence. And what we always talk about is, hey, we're going to control our story. We're going to control our narrative. Um, and that's how we're going to get, get reach out to the stakeholders and let them know what we're doing. We're not perfect. We're very transparent. We tell people we mess up more than we do right. However, we're going to let you know the great things that we're doing here in the school. And we let you know, like, hey, again, we're normal. Don't think that we're up here and you're down here. We're on the same playing field and we're all working towards making kids better. Not just from the social media aspect, but we've done many things. We do a walk and talk. Well, you know, in our community, we have to worry about the health aspect too, but that's a, that's a time for you can actually come out, walk the track, walk, walk the campus. And we, we're actually exercising, but we're talking about education, you know, and where we are prioritizing what's going on with our kids and things like that. And then we do a monthly coffee, uh, coffee and conversation with the principal, which is live. And it's scary because, you know, people can say what they want on a live video. But at the same time, it established a report that, hey, I can ask him what I would like to. I can talk to him about different things. Um, and then, they can, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an extra dialogue that's needed. And again, it's all about bettering the kids and bettering the communication with you and all your stakeholders. Um, I, I totally agree with um, Harvey um, with social media being one of the outlets and everything like that. And I'm not opposite of him. I've always loved social media. I post everything about our school. Um, anyone who knows anything about Shreveport um, and the area in which my school is located, you will understand. But so many times schools want the parents and the community to come in to them. Um, I did the opposite. Um, from the day that I became principal of this school up until this to this day, I walk my community. I go out into the community at least once a month, every day, every time. Um, my school has a project that's behind the hospital. I go there. Um, usually, I was scared to go. You know, if you can see all who's hanging out when you go. But when I go now, it's, what's up, Mr. French? How you doing, Chancellor French? So 
I make sure that I have a presence outside in the community. I go door to door. I do all of it. But I think one of the things that has been the most impactful and powerful on our campus is the one thing I do ask parents to come into come in for is not an ask for the school. It's an ask to better you. I have a community outreach center on my campus that is ran by me and my staff. So what that looks like is we have it set up like a living room for the parents. When you come in, there's computer set up. If you need to apply for your food stamps, you can apply for those food stamps. If you need to come in and apply for a job or to create your um, resume, walk through that with you and make sure that you have those things in place so you can go out and be a better person to make a better life for your student, for your children. So in that research center, they can come and pick out, get books to help with um, ACT prep. And we're elementary. But you may have children who are in high school or anything that's going to help you with any of your pre-K through fifth grade babies as well. You can come into this community that we have here on our campus and get those things. And then I do the actual resume writing workshop myself with my parents or anybody in the community. And once you leave that workshop, you leave with your resume printed on real printer paper that is acceptable for any business profession. And you also leave with your business outfit. Um, I've had um, different fraternities to, do, to donate business outfits for both men and women. So once you finish doing that resume, we let you leave. Hey, come look on the shelf, on the rack, find you an outfit that you're going to wear to this interview. And they leave with that outfit in hand. So what we're doing, we're catering to the whole child, but in order to make sure that child is all the needs are met for that child, we have to make sure some of the needs are met for that family as well. So that would be the mother, whoever's in the household. Come on, let us help you apply for a job. Let us help you get your resume done. Let us help you catch up on a bill. We're not going to pay it. But we're going to show you go online and set it up to pay it, whatever you need to do uh, as far as stamps and everything, especially with the, the state with the PEBT cards. And they're not knowing how to do it. And they're calling the schools and can you set up? Well, come on, let's go down to the resource center. And all you need is the number. So let's put the number in and let's get it moving so you can have all those things done. But that's one thing that we do to get the community involved with us, as well as the parents and stakeholders outside of the school. Okay. Mrs. Robertson and Dr. Meese, what are some ideas beyond back to school nights? Well, once again, we're following Marco with all those great <laughs> ideas he has. My I know, goodness. You know those people are well-dressed when they leave his interview. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> They've had a headshot taken, and we know Marco's good at all, kinds of, all <laughs> kinds of things. So, um, Karen, what, what are some ideas you have about um, different things for parent night? Sure. Um, well, you know, you have your traditional back to school nights, but we um, post COVID had a STEM night, and the where all of these are themed themed STEM night and. Um, shot rockets, um, did all kinds of catapult building. The parents and students loved that night. We've also had family literacy nights. Again, we themed them. We dressed up superheroes and we had literacy nights. We had um, giant outdoor Jenga going on in my front patio um, with words. So those were very um, well attended and different than the traditional come for open house that um, they have kids had cards. They had to go to each station, and once they filled their station, they dropped their card in um, a fishbowl, and they were, prizes were drawn for attendance the next day. I also believe in social media, so we have what we call Good Night Gators, and every Monday night, the kids um, um, can log on with their parents because we wanted to like Jeremy, um, not like Jeremy. I'm sorry, like Ronnie, want to control the script here, so. Um, every Monday night at 6, 7.30, they can log on and a teacher or administrator is reading a bedtime story. So they can hear good reading, good a story read and modeled to them. And it has, that's probably been one of the best, well. I don't know. I think she froze. I'll yeah, keep she's frozen. Um, so, you know, we do also a, a lot of what Karen is talking about with themes. We've done an art night, a math and science night. I'll tell you, the art night is really a lot of fun with different stations around the school that, that families can go to. We've been very successful with our morning events. Um, and so we started out with the cliche, you know, donuts and dads. Uh, muffins and mom. But I'll tell you, people thought that only dad and mom could come to those. And so we, we totally didn't want that. So we changed the names. Uh, and so now we have math morning. They get to come in 
and uh, have a little, a little practice on something that's related to the curriculum, a, a little skill that everybody can kind of work on. Uh, we also do books and breakfast. Uh, same thing, but everybody that comes gets a book and we'll go through a reading strategy on a little um, bookmark that they'll have and they can take that with them. And I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, we do our normal PTO things and that's more, you know, me sharing what's going on at school, right? We've done Java with Jeremy uh, during school days. And so families that are available to come in, it's, I don't have anything to share. I am not doing a presentation. It's really just your chance to come in and see what's going on and ask questions and, and whatever you need to talk about with me, uh, we, are, we are here to do it like we always are, but this time we're gonna make a, a formal event of it. We're gonna have coffee, we're gonna have some, some little snacks. And so everybody's welcome to come in uh, and, and have a less structured, less intimidating meeting than it would be perhaps at a PTO. Okay. I'm going to go ahead with the next slide. I will see if Karen will join us um, in just She's a back. moment. She's back. Mm -hmm. Let me get her on here. One mm -hmm. second. Marco, you didn't talk about cooking for your whole family. Your whole family. Well, that's a, that's a good Freudian slip there for your whole staff, like you talked about yesterday. No, right. I'm back. I'm sorry. I lost connection. Okay. But I know Jeremy had my back and he probably finished out with. Um, I tried. I tried. He made you proud, kid. Good. Well, you're right on time, Ms. Robertson. Um, the next question is for you. Um, what is the best professional development you received as a principal? And what training do you wish you had received early in your career? I will start with what I wish that we had more of professional development of as in, in my um, ed leadership training. Um, I think that principals um, need more on uh, personnel and conflict resolution. We all agreed yesterday and when we were talking that the kids are not our problem. We can handle kids. Kids are great. Um, their discipline and their issues, we are well prepared to um, handle those. It's personnel, uh, personnel issues and problems, and that is something you don't get enough training on. And you are never, um, I don't think you're ever aware, ever ready or prepared for some of the situations that you have to deal with with personnel. So that and conflict resolution. So I would say that um, I wish that there was a little bit more um, professional development in the principal training program for that. Um, some of the, the best things that I've recently um, encountered is um, the leader in me. Um, that has been a, a great professional um, learning experience for me as a principal, because it's not just with students, it's with, it's with the staff as well. Um, those seven habits, um, if our, your staff members take them on and um, to heart and learn them and act on them, you wouldn't have the personnel problems that you might have. So um, that's the, I, I feel strongly about the leader of me and um, the seven habits of highly su successful people and um, training more principals on that. Okay. Mr. Harvey. Do you have a professional development plan for yourself this year? And what does it entail? Well, um, this year I actually said that I, that, that was one thing I wanted to do is grow as a professional is to get out and, and try to like re get as many resources as I can. And I actually said this on yesterday when we were all together, but I'm gonna be brutally honest, this this group right here, and and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put them on a platform. It's, Ms. Robinson, Mr. French, Mr. Muse, Dr. Muse, man, this is the best professional development we can ever have. I can be honest with you. you know, we can pay to go to conferences. I just left Atlanta uh, from a motivational speaking conference and it was great. It really was great, but it's textbook. And I think here in Louisiana, we have to just simply just look to the left and look to the right, look who's in front of us, look who's behind us. The best professional developer we can have is just simply have conversations with fellow principals across the state of Louisiana. We all have that same common denominator. 
and that's that we're just simply trying to make students better in the state of Louisiana. So I'm, I've, I've been challenging myself just to get out and meet more principals, have conversations with more principals. Um, you know, not so much just a blanket approach because what's good for my school may be different from Mr. French school. It may be different from Ms. Robinson school and so forth. But I think the best professional development is just talking to like-minded individuals who have a genuine love and compassion for education and for kids. And that's just what I plan to do for the rest of the year. Along with reading, I mean, I, I love to buy books and read, um, but I definitely just want to continue this course, just speaking to people like yourself. You know, we get so many, so much information from each other. I think that's sometimes all the development that we really need. I would agree. I've learned so much from him. I have this book because of him. It was right <laughs> on his reading list. So I pulled it up and... This is some good, good reading. 10 Daily Essentials for Principals. Which one is it? The 10 Daily Essentials for yes. Principals. You keep this on your desk. And so I had to get it. And I, I totally agree. This is great stuff. I agree. And I just want to say this too. Um, there's a principal who's from um, East New Jersey. He goes by the name of Principal Baruti Kafele. He offers a, a AP uh, thing on social media every Saturday. It's free. I'm telling you powerful nuggets of information that you can just go on and get. Um, he has a great following in Louisiana, but I mean, several of his books are on my shelf and I'm gonna be honest, like just tools of information. I would definitely spread that to everybody. Well, that brings us to our next question for everyone. Uh, what is on your professional reading list or what have you recently read that you think principals should read? <laughs> Karen. Yeah, definitely the leader in me. And, um, or if you haven't read the um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, and they have it for people, for students, for children, it's all based off the same seven habits. But I then have learned from um, Mr. Ronnie, the 10 Daily Essentials for Principles. This is good, good advice, simple, things that you probably don't think about or, and you're like, oh, that's smart. And um, one of the things is greet your staff every day. Every day, try to greet your staff. And that was one of the ones that I thought, okay, that's, that's a good positive to do. And that's a way to check in on their social emotional well-being or listen to see if you can't solve a problem for them. So those are my two. That's awesome. I, um, I really can't recommend Ryan Holiday enough. I think that... Uh, Part of being a better principal is being a better me. I don't think I need to, to really read a lot of um, being a better principal. I need to read about how to be a better human uh, and a better person and growing myself. Um, and so his, you know, his series starts out with um, The Obstacle is the Way. And I'll tell you that this book has completely changed how I see things, how I view opportunities, um, how I get to work with people and just the opportunities that we have in this incredible position. Um, and he has two other books in that series, uh, Ego is the Enemy. And I, I think that's, a, that's a, great, a great insight right there. And then Stillness is the Key. And his, uh, his newest book came out today. It's called Courage is Calling. And so I'm, I'm actually wind up listening to that. I wind up listening to these things in the car more than, more than actually sitting down to to read them uh, with everyone knows about the email problem. So um, like both of them, they both names outstanding books of which I've read or reading. Um, being the situation that we're in, we've been in an um, achievement zone, having to turn around a school. Um, so um, School Turnaround is one book that I am reading. I just finished Paul Bambrick's Relay um, Schools Graduate Studies. Um, so I've written a lot of his books, but I'm going to tell you all the one thing that I do read every day, and it's on the corner of my desk, and it has nothing to do with education, um, but it goes back to what Dr. Um, Jeremy Meese was saying, when you're trying to build yourself, and again, you all, we are in positions to where so much is put on us, so this is one book that I read every day, and this one right here, and it hits those exact same things that Dr. Meese just talked about, what Karen just talked about. Those tidbits are in this same book, but I read these every day and I've gone through this book twice. I got this book when I became a principal, but every day there's something in one of these books that I can actually go to. And that's outside of my professional library that I read. Um, books like The Reflective Learner, 
I'm in that one a lot. And uh, one book I just believe that every principal should have on your desk or on your shelf behind you is Driven by Data. That was one book that can lead you through everything, especially knowing how to just look at data in your school holistically. Um, but when you want to get away from the academic side and just focus on self and how different things can you can apply to anything that's going on in your building. Um, those two readings right there has helped me a lot. Marco, what was the name of that book? Instinct by T.D. Jakes. No, the one you said, was it Driven by Death? Oh, Driven by Data. It's one driven of Paul's members. Data, books. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be Driven by Death. Driven by Data. Okay, Write it down. The um, <laughs> this this might sound crazy, but um, I'm 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 going to claim this for everybody on the screen. But I'm gonna be honest. There's an amazing book that's waiting to be written by this year's cohort. I'm gonna be brutally honest because I don't think that everybody's realizing their gift. And I get we're talking about who we read and what we're reading and who we're following. Man, let me tell you, the gifts on this screen is amazing. And I, I think, I'm going to be honest, I'm just I'm just excited to be a part of it. I'm going to be honest, Louisiana really have some people who are doing a phenomenal job. And it's amazing to see that we're talking about, you know, the things that we're doing. But I don't think people realize, I don't, I'm going to say this, I don't think we realize from our conversation yesterday is that somebody in this group is next. And I think that with the support system that we have, I'm going to be like a platform like this, somebody's going to be next because somebody's watching. But I'm not trying to like be an advertiser for anybody, but I picked up a bunch of books because literally this guy, Principal Baruti Kafele, is somebody who I always read, like he's all over my bookshelf. But why I like his platform is because he really caters to this. And I think sometimes we forget to talk about the assistant principal. You know, we're all principals and we talk about um, the things we do as administrators, but we, you know, some of our strongest supporters is that AP. You know, and so a lot of times we don't cater to them, but he has many books. I would suggest, you know, he has the teacher 50, the AP 50, the principal 50, and it's just good tools just to keep close to you to always read. But um, again, I do think that there's a bestseller on this platform right here. And I think we just have to, whoever it may be, we got to support that person because like information and platforms like this, trust me, it's forthcoming from somebody. And I'm claiming it for everybody on the screen. That's right. It is right. That is right. Uh, that's right. Marco, did you buy that website we talked about? It is in the works. Okay, good. Today, it's in the works. More to come. <laughs> MarcoFrench.com. <laughs> the bow, the bow, the bow tie principle. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Mr. French and Dr. Mutes, what learnings from last year are you bringing with you to the years ahead? I think it's important that, you know, last year really taught us and the year before that as well to not take for granted that we have 180 instructional days. We need to make every day count with kids. Every day is a vital, irreplaceable, invaluable asset. And we have to take advantage of it to make our kids just a little bit better when they leave the building than when they come in. There's an urgency, you know, our, our school flooded, we call it uh, the Great Flood, and it was in 2016. And I'll tell you that our scores went up that year more than any other year because of the incredible work that the staff did. And they realized that they were missing about a month of school with kids and we had to get it done. And so just making sure that each day is, is incredibly valuable and is honored and that everyone, students and me, are doing the very best we can each day. We can't take for granted. We never know on what Friday the 13th, because it was a March recently, Friday the 13th, that we all got sent home and we didn't know what was gonna happen after that. So we really have to, we really have to, to honor each day. Um, totally agree, Dr. Meese, honor each day. Um, that was one thing that really, really stuck with me um, when we went into the pandemic, even last year. But on the flip side, because I, I'm so pro my children, and we talked about this yesterday, knowing our why, um, the kids are my why. That is my why. But on the flip side um, of that, um, one thing since the pandemic started up until last year, before last, I think the most valuable lesson that I have gotten is take time for Marco. Slow down and make sure you're good, because if you're not good, your school is not good. 
And I think um, Ronnie may have alluded to that early on in the conversation, but just me taking time to look at the whole situation before I go and try to build a plan or before I go and try to implement a plan. Um, I think Siobhan may be on this call and she knows if they came and gave me feedback today on fixing this, 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 where in two hours, I'm going to have it fixed, you know, but just taking the time to slow down um, and, and take time to regurgitate everything. Um, that's, that's being given or taken and make sure that it works. But at the same time, take time to make sure that I'm good. I can slow down to make sure that I'm doing all the things, not only best for my students, but that are best for me and my staff as well. Because I'm not the most important part, but I am the part that put the vision out there. So I need someone to keep the vision alive for my staff that I can impart and implement it on someone else so they can continue the vision that I have for this school as well. Okay, thank you. The next few questions are for everyone on the panel. What do you do for fun or how do you relax? I check email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna share a picture. Oh. Aww. I love to spend time with my grandchildren and I like to read and exercise. So the seventh habit is sharpen the saw. So we exercise, so I like to exercise, but this right here is the best exercise. Spend time with your kids and your family. Leave at 4.30. Yeah. Um, for me, the things I do have fun, I, I love being at the school. You know, I'd stay here 10, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just love it and I relax when I'm here. But if I got to think of some outside the school and I'm like, Karen, I can show a picture. It still goes back to my students. I love to travel. I love to cook. I love to eat. But one thing that is most so, so, so important to me, and again, I'm a social media thing. Um, this is one thing I truly enjoy with my kids, you all. TikTok. TikTok. So I, I, I enjoy truly doing TikTok with my kids. And that's the way that I'm able to bond with my kids. And we do a TikTok at least every week. I don't post all of them. But that's just a way for me to bond with the kids because, again, they are my why. I don't know that their principal has their, have their back. I'm truly here for them. But outside of school, it's travel, cooking, and eating. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that and, and what we're talking about with family. Um, you know, I, I love being a part of the Lions Club in our community and, and uh, getting to work with the other great people that are not in education and do the things that we do. Um, with food banks and uh, just different works that are going around town. It's nice to, to you know, have that connection to the community outside of, of just being here at school. And then I have to say, I'm an avid Dodgers fan. It's been, a, it's been a great year with them winning the World Series last year and uh, the LSU Tigers and UL and, and just everything that, that's been going on trying to keep up with that has been a nice, nice distraction. And I'll take that UL segue right over there to Mr. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody know I am a diehard raging Cajun. Even when we go to the LSU game on the 27, I'm telling y'all right now, I am wearing red, gold Cajuns. Okay, I'm not wearing purple and gold. I know that's going to offend some people. Well, there's going to be a lot of people there that, that might have something to say about that. Hey, I know I'm going to get called Tiger Bait all day, <laughs> but hey, I'm go Cajuns all day, but... In my free time, I'm going to be honest, I like to hang around school. This might sound crazy, but my office is my safe place. I get a chance to really relax when no one is here and actually get to work uh, with limited distractions. Um, in my free time, I love spending time with my family. I love traveling. Um, and I'm an entrepreneur, so I, I own a couple of different businesses. I, I, I love to just work. That might sound crazy, but most people ask me, what's my hobby? And I just say work. Anything that keeps me busy keeps me sane. So that might sound crazy, but... Um, that's just like what I like to do for fun. Okay. Do you all have any advice or anything additional you would like to share with our leaders on the call today? Um, if, if I had to say anything, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, there's some amazing people and I keep saying that, but you know, I know a lot of times people look at, you know, the the, the overall winner and the state, win I mean, the division winners and things like that and think like, you know, we've all done phenomenal things. And I think in 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 each is each right. Yeah, you, you can say that. But I think we're stronger together. 
I think if we can just lean on somebody, it's okay to call us. I think everybody on the panel feels the same way. We're just a phone call, a text, or an email away. And there's no such thing as a, a weird question or off the top question. I think we just have to be comfortable. Be, be, don't be afraid to reach out and, and, and keep on going. You know, um, this is an amazing process. Being a principal in Louisiana is amazing. So just, you know, reach out, communicate, network as much as you can, um, and enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. I agree completely, Ronnie. Um, and I would add on, don't forget to have fun. You know, this is really an incredible job. This is something that we all went to school to learn how to do. And, and somehow the stars have aligned and we get to do this great thing of working with adults and kids to really shape the future of our, of our community and our state. And so the pressure of that can really be a lot. But one of the ways to make it work and one of the ways to make it sustainable is to get out there and have fun and do the things like Karen's talking about, um, you know, really get in there and, and enjoy the students, enjoy working with the adults, enjoy working with the parents, because we, we really are uh, in a fantastic position that we get to have an, an incredible impact on other people. And, and it, it's an honor and it, and it really can be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. Um, you get to choose your attitude. Choose positive, choose positive, get out of your office and get with the students, get with the students, get with the teachers, be that smiling face. We know what happens sometimes after school and sometimes the only smiling face or the meal they have is at school. So choose your attitude and choose a positive one um, and be there for your students. And I guess I wrap it up and they've already said to you all, have fun with this. Um, if you're not enjoying your job, you're in the wrong seat because we have to, we set the tone for the school. And if you come dreading it, not want to be there every day, you can't fault a teacher that feels that way or a student that feels that way. Have fun in what you're doing. Uh, every day I come to work, I put on the biggest smile. I come dressed head to toe because, and, and sometimes I am hiding some things that I don't want them to see, but I have a job to do. Um, and that comes along with the territory. But again, I have fun every day here on this campus. I'm waiting to get a phone call because I posted something on Facebook during work time. But it's for the school. It's not me personally. It's for the school. And I want people to see the fun that we have here. And we are our biggest promoters. We are not like a lot of charter schools who, can, who has advertisements out of this world. That's one way of me promoting my school. That is one reason why I have kids out of district at my school. You know, because I post things to say, hey, we're having fun over here, but we're having fun, but we're learning. So again, have fun, learn all that you can, because like they've said already, we don't know what our next step is. Some of us have it planned out, but if we want to look like a fool and make God laugh, go along with what you think it should be. I have fun every day. And I'm just asking that God just lead, continue to lead me, my staff, and our students where and what he wants us to be. That's right. Okay. Thank you. At this time, uh, if there are any audience members that have questions for the panelists, you may put them in the chat at this time and I will read them for the group. So again, if there are any audience members that have questions for the panelists, please put them in the chat at this time. So either we did that good or they just push play. <laughs> I'm looking at my front door and I teachers are at the door hand signaling me. <laughs> well, we don't have a question, but we have a comment from Jay Hurd, outstanding group. Awesome. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Thank um, you. I love, this is from Renee Thompson. I love all of the ideas to involve parents on campus. How are you dealing with social distancing? We're doing the best we can as far as um, bringing in extra desks um, to try to make sure we stay three to six feet apart. Um, wearing our mask. We had some partitions built. Um, we had not we had families, husbands, dads, aunts, um, build partitions. We had our local um, 
um, technical college. They volunteer. We bought the supplies. They bought, volunteered their time to help with some partitions. Um, so we're just trying to do the best we can to keep kids 36 feet apart and wearing their mask and then having the partitions up to help. We call them sneeze guards to help with um, social distancing. It's a team on effort. Our on our campus, it's, it's been actually easy since the beginning of all this. Um, our kids are in masks every day. We have hand, hand sanitizing stations up throughout the school. Um, and we're doing our best to keep classes separate from each other. Mm -hmm. so, if we're all in the same class with each other, um, and we only have two grade, two classes per grade level, so it's it's darn impossible to social distance all those kids in a classroom. You have a class of at least twenty three kids, twenty five kids. Um, we're doing we make sure that those classes stay separated um, from each other uh, because learning still has to take place, and we're trying to make school as normal as possible for the kids and still be an experience for them. Um, so the groups are staying separated, but when it comes down to a class, you may have two feet apart from each other that they're actually being, but knock on wood, we haven't had any outbreaks of cases or anything since the pandemic started. So I, high school is always hard. Um, I mean, you're dealing with young adults, so you know that they kind of thrive on, you know, that the, the touchy feely type stuff. Um, so it almost is impossible. We just try to be transparent and let them know, like, hey, this is what's happening as a result of COVID-19. You know, these are the things that's happening, just letting people know. And I think I will say this. I tip my hat to the faculty, staff and students. They've been doing a phenomenal job of just staying masked up and trying to social distance, distance as much as possible. But at the same time, you know, we, we just keep pushing out, you know, what CDC says, what our board says and, you know, try to be redundant in our sayings. But at the same time, it let being transparent is almost impossible, but we just have to do the best possible job that we can. Yeah, I completely agree with Ronnie. You know, we, we've we've done the best we can. We're trying to spread out. Uh, I'll give the credit to our community who's really, you know, uh, nobody wants to be in masks all day. I certainly know I don't. I know our kids don't want to be, um, but they have been and they're spread out. And so we really have gotten to limit the amount of kids that were quarantined and that's that's the point we need the kids here at school we don't want to send them home because they're a close contact of someone and so just getting the parent uh buy-in on that that we are going to spread the kids out we're going to wear masks we're going to be the, the appropriate space apart so that we can keep your kids here you know it's really been a, a, a tremendous credit to our, our community that, that they've done, they've gotten behind this effort. Okay. Um, Janet Woodard says you all were phenomenal. Thank you for sharing your experience, experiences and success with us. Jay Hill, not a question, but she wants you all to know how proud she is of you all and to keep up the great work. Uh, Tracy Bach, thank you so much. I learned a lot, this was great. Uh, Monique Cola, I think I said that correctly. Thank you all so much. I agree with Mr. Harvey. This is the best PD for principals. Um, it's kind of a repeat question, but she wants to know what are some of the takeaways from last year? She said someone walked in her office during that time, so she wanted to know what were some of your takeaways from last year? Well, something that I took away from last year that I had never done before and hadn't come up yet is you don't have to sit in a room to have a faculty meeting. Zoom is fabulous. Um, now I had my very first Zoom meeting ever um, last year. And so now Zoom has been a great tool to be able to have a faculty meeting or a grade team meeting or um, any kind of meeting that you want to have um, through Zoom. So that's a takeaway I've, I've brought from last year that I'm continuing to use. I think the parents have appreciated that also, that they don't need to take all that time off from work to travel here and travel back. You know, we can meet, uh, we can meet like this and, and have a really meaningful discussion and they don't need to miss as much work and we can let them know what's going on and, and get their, get their input on what we need to do. Um, so I think that has been, it's been lots of unintended happy byproducts on that. Okay, this is from Anthony's Banks. 
Uh, thank you for sharing your time and experience with us. I'm a little more confident in moving into an administrator role. You can do it. Definitely. Call it PQ. How would each of you describe your leadership style? We truly appreciate all that you guys do. Um, I would say my leadership style would be, uh, I'm going to say all in. When I say all in, it's because uh, for anybody that knows me, I mop, I sweep floors, I do the lawn, um, I lead by example. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do. I've cleaned toilets, throw, throw up, all of it. But I think the biggest picture of that is, um, that it shows to my staff is, one, my principal is right there with me. Um, you all, and I kid you not, for the first two years, I never would say I was the principal of Queensboro. I would say I'm one of the teachers at Queensboro. I worked at Queensboro. Whenever I would take my staff out to eat, and I never get a waiter, a waitress, she said, um, are you the principal? I said, no, I'm one of the teachers. And they were like, Mr. French, stop lying. He the principal of the school. You know, and I was like, that doesn't matter. We are a team. On paper, yes, there are hierarchies and levels to this. But when it comes down to the work in this building, I'm no higher than you. I'm a teacher first. And I tell all of you all, I started different from many of you. I was a substitute first. So therefore, I know the importance of teamwork, camaraderie. I understand all of that. So my thing is I lead by example, and I'm willing to get in the, in the trenches with you and crawl on my knees if I have to, to pull you along, to walk beside of you. However, whatever is needed, I'm going to do it. Do I have time to sweep floors? No, I don't. Do I have time not to sweep floors? No, I don't. So it's like it, I have no choice but to do it. I would say to surround yourself with like-minded people and a good leadership team. Um, I, I guess you would say we call it distributive leadership. So I have a leadership team and we have committees and you get your leadership team on your same page and they them to understand your vision and then have them help um, implement that vision throughout your campus. You, it's not a team of one. You can't do it by yourself. So surround yourself with a good leadership team. Make sure they all understand your vision and then help them lead your school um, through different committees. I completely agree with Karen. Um, this, is, this is the first job I've ever had where if I got behind or I needed to catch up or I needed just to do better, the correct answer was not to do more and work harder. You know, it, it doesn't work in this position. And so uh, I had to learn that the hard way and get really solid people around me that had the same vision like Karen's talking about. And then like Karen's talking about, be that distributive leader and trust their expertise. That's why you brought them on board. That's why they're there on your leadership team and allow them to, to do what they do. And you continually come around and you're checking to making sure everything is happening but you can't do all the work yourself. Um, I had, I think, Doug Reeves. I mentioned him yesterday. I'm just a huge fan of his work. And he talks about, you know, you can't be the carpenter. You can't be the one with the hammer and the nails. You have to be the architect. You have to be what, the one designing what's going on on campus so that other people can, can help you create that vision. Okay. Um, and that does I'm sorry, that, go ahead. Well, so that doesn't mean to contradict what Marco is saying, because I also believe that, yes, I need to see you out there and you need to be, you need to fill in the gap when you need to fill in the gap. Yeah, absolutely. So, Your job is sometimes to swing the hammer and, and, yeah. and put boards together and make all that happen figuratively and literally. But, yeah, but so also, I, just like Marco's doing, making sure everything is happening across the campus with, with his great team. Okay. Uh, Ms. Thompson says, thank you. Ms. Leach, great job. I love the fact that you all are working to showcase your schools in a positive light, making sure the needs of your faculty are taken care of as well as the students. Um, I appreciate all of you sharing your, expert, your experiences and expertise. And thank you. Um, that was at 3.13 or 3.17. Um, if there are no more questions, I do, I do see Ronnie is muted if I'm sure he may want to may want to jump into oh, Ronnie I'm sorry let me oh that's cool that's cool everybody said everything or that's cool okay well 
I would like to thank these dynamic leaders for joining us today and for the impactful work you do each and every day. You all are simply amazing as I knew that you would be. And I wanna thank you all so much for participating in this webinar. I would also like to thank everyone who joined today. And I would like to invite you to join next month's webinar on October 25th for more principal support. And also um, invite you all to subscribe to the monthly principal newsletter. I will drop this link in the chat. For everyone, so if you have not signed up, please sign up for the principal newsletter. And here's my contact information if you have any questions about principal support. So again, I would like to thank our panelists today. You all did an amazing job and thank you to everyone that joined in. And that concludes our first principal webinar series. Thank you all so much and you all have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.